Hi guys, in this video lesson uh, we'll speak with you how to make configuration, how to make basic configuration of the Cisco uh, Catalyst switches and uh, also we'll take a look for how the switch is booting up, the process of the booting up of the switch and this is lesson 5 of our uh, CCNA routing switching tool book so let's, let's start with you so first of all, uh, let's take a look for how switch uh, boot, uh, boot the system. Let's take a look for the boot system uh, sequence of the switch. So first of all, uh, switch runs the POST. The POST is just the power on the self-test. Uh, it is uh, such kind of test, like a diagnostic test, uh, which is making diagnostic of the, the hardware, like is the processor is working properly, is the RAM memory is working properly, and so on. After the POST is finished, uh, switch loads the, the boot loader. The boot loader is uh, placed in the ROM memory, which is uh, read-only memory on the, on the switch. And then uh, bootloader performs low level CPU initialization. The initialization the CPU registers which control where the physical memory is mapped, the quantity of memory and its speed. Then, so this work done by the bootloader. And then bootloader initializes the flash file system on the system board. Uh, and finally, the bootloader locates uh, and loads the default operating system. Uh, software image into the memory and gives control of the switch over the IOS. Uh, so switch uh, takes the operating system fr from the flash memory by using the, the bootloader uh, services and then a switch takes the, the file, the configuration file, uh, by default it is stored in the NVRAM memory and then a switch start to work properly. But sometimes it can be a situation that, you know, the, the even operating system is not on the flash memory, it can be from different place, and the configuration file also is stored, uh, can be stored on locally on the switch, or maybe it can be stored somewhere else, so for example in, in any TFTP server. Uh, how we can manage switch by the console cable and why we have to use the console cable? The console cable is like a management uh, cable. Uh, mostly it is used in initial configuration uh, it, um, at that moment when device doesn't have an IP address. For example, you just start to make configuration of switch 1 and there is no configura configured IP address yet. So that is why you are not able to make configuration of switch by using IP. And you are just getting this console cable and directly from your computer you are making uh, connection to the switch switch console port and then you can just make configuration of it by directly connected cable so that um, the cases where it can be used the console cable where uh, mostly use the console cable it is initial configuration where there is no uh, IP address set on the switch uh, the second is uh, you have some problems with switch uh, switch is not working properly uh, so it's, it's damaged or you want to restore the password. So in these cases you can use the console cable and uh, mostly you will use uh, connection and management by IP so that it will be Telnet or it can be the SSH. Uh, and now let me, let me show you how you can manage your switch uh, by IP so that you can use the Telnet uh, protocol to make access for the switch. And uh, it's time to show you an example in which we have a uh, topology and uh, from computer 2, so I have cable, so let me first of all delete this cable and even this cable. So we have switch, we have computer, we want to make uh, management from PC2, so we uh, to switch to. So we select uh, cable type console. And then we select the port type RS232, which is serial port. And then we are connecting to console port of the switch. Now, uh, if you will click to PC2, here we have terminal application. And now we are inside the switch. So uh, you, you are able to manage the switch. You are able to change the host name and so on. Um, in the same way, so if you click to your switch 
on top of your switch. So here we have physical, config and CLI. CLI it is also the, the management uh, interface, uh, command line interface. And it, imagine that when you uh, go to configure switch through computer by using terminal and console cable, um, imagine that it's the same job when, when you are just clicking to the switch in, in the packet tracer. And uh, we can make configuration of switch without uh, IP address if we have console connection. And uh, now our idea is to configure our switch with IP address uh, to be able to make connection without, uh, I mean to manage the switch without the console cable by using uh, an IP address. So first of all we have to uh, make configuration of the IP address of our switch. Our switch's IP address is going to be 10, 1, 1 and 100 with prefix 24. But we are not able to assign IP address to the physical ports because this layer 2 device. So switch works uh, as a layer 2 device and we are not able to provide an IP address for that port. But we are able to use the SVI which stands for the switch virtual interface which can have an IP address. So uh, what we have to do? We have to uh, penetrate into the SVI switch virtual interface and all of my interfaces, all of my switch ports by default are working with the uh, SVI interface which is called interface uh, VLAN 1. All of my ports again are working with this interface. And uh, then I can provide this information, I can turn on this interface and then I can provide an IP address for this interface like 10, 1, 1 and 100 with subnet mask of prefix 24. Now um, I have to check, do I have, uh, conf did I configure this IP address properly or not? So to, to take a look for the output of the interfaces in brief, so you, you can write show IP interface brief command uh, that is showing you that you have uh, a lot of interfaces including interface at the end uh, it's written here uh, the interface name is VLAN1 which has this IP address okay but uh, as I mentioned before uh, all my interfaces are under the virtual interface which is called VLAN1 and if I provide IP address for this interface, it means that all my ports will have uh, the same IP address. So you can contact to this switch by the same IP address through different ports. Uh, so that we have now an IP address of the switch. And uh, let me be connected from switch to computer by the cable, which will be the 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 trace row cable from fast Ethernet to fast Ethernet 01. Now it's time to check the connectivity between computer uh, 2 and switch 2. To check the connectivity we are able to type pin command. Oh sorry. 10, 1, 1 and 100 from computer 2 to switch 2. We are trying to make pink and we are waiting. The first packet lost due to the fact that we have ARP process and all other rest packages are delivered properly. So uh, now it's time to uh, configure also the passwords for line VTY. So we have uh, line VTY uh, interfaces, I'm sorry, virtual lines, which stands for uh, remote configuration of our equipment. And we have to provide a password for this line because without password you, you are not able to successfully uh, manage your equipment. And if you'll try to type the comment like telnet, this is protocol name 10, 1, 1 and 100, then your uh, output will be like this. Connection to this address closed by foreign host. It means that switch is not providing you ability to configure switch remotely without even this console cable uh, due to that fact that we don't have uh, we didn't set password for line VTY and this security issue we have to improve it 
so that we have to penetrate into configuration of the line uh, VTY 0, 15. What does it mean 0 and 15? It means that we have from 0 till 15 uh, virtual lines uh, which stands for remote configuration of the switch and when you type from 0 till 15, it's actually from 0 till 15, it means that uh, you select all these lines and you will configure them with passwords. For example, your password will be uh, Cisco and you will say that when someone will try to log in into this uh, one of this virtual line, uh, your switch will ask to type exactly this password. This login stands that uh, it is describing exactly this password because we, we may have different passwords on the switch. Um, and here it is. Now, after I did it, uh, let me try to make Telnet con connection from PC2 to switch one more time. And here it is. It is asking me to type the password and I'm typing the password. Then uh, it seems like everything is done, but when you'll type command enable, it is saying that there is no password for privileged executive mode and it's also dangerous to to provide anyone to access uh, remotely without password. I mean to to change the configuration mode without password to privileged executive configuration mode. So that is why we have to type at least this command enable password or you may select as it, or as the secret and let us say class. I'm saving my configurations and now uh, from computer I'll try to make this job again so it's asking me to type the class. Show run and now I have full access for my switch remotely. And uh, you know that w we did this job, it's very nice, but uh, we also will try to make a uh, telnet connection from remote computer, I mean from different network. And uh, when we are trying to do so, uh, this job, so when we will type telnet uh, 10, 1, 1 and 100, then we will not be successful due to that fact that our switch is not uh, able to contact, it doesn't know the IP address of its default gateway. For example, if we'll take a look for configurations of PC2, uh, so it has default gateway 10.1.1.1. If we'll take a look for configurations of PC3, it also does uh, ha has the default gateway, which is uh, IP address of the router's interface. But our switch doesn't have this configuration. So that we have to provide the configuration of the file gateway by using uh, global configuration mode and we have to just type IP the file gateway and then we just type this IP address and now if you'll type the command show running configuration file on your switch you have to find here the value which is defining this the file gateway so that when your switch wants to uh, give the answer for PC3 which is on foreign network uh, it will contact the router's interface gigabit zero zero. So now let's make the uh, one more attempt. And here it is. Oh, this is how guys we are able to provide a management uh, configuration of our switch to, to manage our switch uh, by using IP address. Uh, and we have uh, SVI, Switch Virtual Interface, which is providing us ability to make configuration of switch remotely by IP address. It's time to speak about uh, the MDIX, uh, which stands for the Medium Dependent Interface uh, Crossover. So uh, Catalyst switches 2960 and 3560 supports the Auto MDIX and it means that for this switches there is no matter what kind of cable you have you will use between uh, switches con uh, connection for example as you remember when you have two switches which are connecting to each other and uh, they have to have uh, exactly connection by using the the crossover cable from one side it will be a for example from another side it will be uh, b type of connection of the ethernet cable uh, but if you are using the auto MDX uh, so by default, as I, as I mentioned, the auto MDX function is turned on on Catalyst uh, switches 2960 and 3560. 
So it means that switch sports can uh, immediately understand the situation, like switch connects to switch, all right, then uh, it will just change the, you know, this, uh, it will convert uh, from straight road to crossover or, or vice versa. So that uh, to be able to change your uh, MDIX configuration, you just have to type MDIX auto. Or if you didn't do it, uh, then it is turned on by default. If you want to turn it on, then you have to type just no MDX auto. To take a look for for your uh, interface, which is supporting or not supporting, I mean to to understand is your interface is supporting this uh, function and is it uh, turned on, then you have to just type common show controllers Ethernet controller FA01. PHY physical and uh, column include auto MDX and you will see that your MDX is turned on on port FA01. Uh, also we have uh, ability to configure but it's actually by default configured as a duplex auto. It means that in case if your switch is connecting um, to the hub, hub is working as the half duplex then switch port will work also as a half duplex. So this command will provide this ability so that you don't need to configure uh, manually so that when you connect to the hub so you don't need to say okay you will work as the half duplex port and also speed also selects uh, automatically by the switch port speed auto so that if you have speed uh, if your interface is working as fast as 01 but you are connecting it to the uh, computer which has a very old interface card which supports only uh, 10 megabits per second then your port which is uh, working as 100 megabits per second will start to work as 10 megabits per second too. Alright, uh, verification of configurations. Uh, which comments you have to type to to understand that you uh, are making the job correctly. Uh, one of the one of the comment is show interfaces. So when you type command on your switch, as show interfaces, you are able to see all of your configurations, I mean, of, of, of all of your uh, switch ports. And if you have 24 ports, then you will have a full descri description of your ports, including some information about errors and the status is turned on or turned off. Uh, if you'll type comment, uh, like so let me finish this comment, show uh, startup co configuration file, then you will see uh, what you have in the startup configuration file, which is, uh, stands for the backup uh, uh, of your configurations, uh, which is stored in NVRAM memory. Uh, well, next one, if you'll type comment show run, then it is showing you the running configuration file, uh, which is the current configuration file and it's stored in RAM memory. So that if I'm saving my, uh, if I'm typing copy run to startup configuration file, then uh, running configuration file and startup configuration file will be identical to each other. Uh, if you'll type comment uh, show flash, then you will see uh, files which are stored in the flash. So one of the file is the configuration. Yeah, one of the files configuration file. Uh, then another file is uh, call it the um, the file which, which is storing the the operating system. This is our operating system, Cisco iOS. And then um, show version command will show you the version of the operating system and uh, will show you some additional information about its uh, ports, like it has so many fast Ethernet, so many gigabit Ethernet, and it has to tell you information about its uh, the memory of the RAM and the CPU power, uh, I mean performance and so on. So if you'll type the comment, show history, you will see that comments which you typed before. Okay, this is just the list of the history comments. Show IP comment uh, provides the information to learn about uh, internet protocol which is configured on this switch. 
So like you can uh, additionally type your show IP interface brief comment, which will show you information about uh, brief information about interfaces with uh, configuration of IP addresses. And uh, also, uh, as you know, that switch learns the MAC addresses. Uh, you can learn for the MAC addresses by using the show MAC address table command, which is showing us that the switch uh, 2 is connecting uh, and it's already learned dynamically the MAC address like this through port FA02. All right, uh, now let's let's move on and let's take a look what do we have more so if you'll type common show interface status of uh, one of the interfaces of the switch uh, then you can see a lot of output including some errors and uh, including the status of the switch port show interface fa01 so here we have a lot of information okay uh, what is the speed what is the delay what is the reliability and is it full duplex or, or, or half duplex? Is it connected? What is the MAC address of this uh, switch port? And additionally, we, we may see here the information uh, which is looking like the errors. So we, we may have information about errors uh, on the switch port. They are so. We have uh, runs, GNs, and total errors, uh, CRC values, uh, frames overrun, ignore it and so on. So let's take a look for their description. So input errors describe uh, the the number of errors including runt, GNs and no buffer CRC frame overrun and ignore counts. So that what what is the meaning of runt? The packet are dis, uh, discarded because they are uh, smaller than the minimum packet size for the medium. Uh, for instance any Ethernet packet is less than uh, 64 bytes is considered to be called as a runt or a karlik. You know, it's the very small uh, frame, uh, which is looking like an error because uh, the the very small, the smallest value which which is available is 64 bytes. And if your frame is less than 64 bytes, then this runt frame it is error. Or the giant frame, the packet are discarded because they are exceed the maximum uh, packet size for the medium. For example, Ethernet packet that is greater than one and a half uh, thousand bytes is considered as a giant because, as you remember, we have the, the MTU, like, which stands for the maximum transmission unit for uh, different types of the media. So, uh, and for the Ethernet, it is, uh, your, your packet doesn't have to exceed the, the size of one and a half thousand bytes. Uh, another uh, error type is the CRC, so that when computer or when the switch ports receive the, the frame and when it's making calculation of the CRC, as you remember it's coming from the previous topics, uh, when we describe the switch uh, switching process, and uh, we have two uh, forwarding methods of the switches, uh, they are called, uh, one of them is called cut and throw, which is not checking for the CRC values. And another for, uh, type of the switching is called the, the, the store and forward, which is storing the frame, then calculates the CRC value. If there is no uh, mistakes in the CRC, then switch is retransmits the information. So that uh, in case when we have store and forward uh, method of the switching, if switch finds that the CRC value is not equal to that CRC value, which which calculated CRC value, which is not equal to uh, CRC value or which is stored in the frame trailer, then switch that uh, just delete the frame and then this place uh, the counter for the CRC in the uh, input errors. Okay, uh, output errors. Some of all errors uh, that pr prevent the final uh, transmission of the datagrams out of the interface that uh, being e e examined. So as you see it is here, the output errors. Uh, so inside our output errors we have a uh, number of messages retransmitted because of the uh, Ethernet collision. So if you are connect, if your switch uh, port is connecting to the 
uh, hub so then if you have a lot of collisions so it's not a big deal but if you have switch which is connecting to another switch and if you have uh, a lot of collisions then then something wrong happened here because this is collision free area and this is collision uh, the area with the collision and late collision uh, that occurs after 512 bits uh, of the frame have been transmitted uh, so this kind of problem can be occurred when your switch uh, <coughs> is connected to the long distance with another device so it can be also switch so that uh, your switch is sending some signals and uh, so after 512 bits if something wrong happened or it means that if some latency is happening here so that uh, your switch will uh, understand that there there, is, there are some collisions uh, with with the frame, so it's called the late collision. All right, uh, and now it's time to take a look how we can make configuration of the SSH. So previously we worked with you with the Telnet, um, and what are the disadvantages of Telnet? It is that uh, all information which is sent and uh, received is sent and received by plain text. What does it mean? It means that um, the switch, when it is configured by the host, for example, we have host and we have a switch, when you are making this configuration, and uh, for example, the IP address of this device is looking like this, so you, you type the telnet command and then you type the IP address of that equipment and then you prompt it to type the password. So when you prompt it to type the password, you type the password and it's looking like star 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 star. For example, this is Cisco password. But in fact, uh, it is sent in plain text so that uh, there is information about the password is Cisco. So there will be written password is equal to Cisco. So if someone else uh, will make an attack like of the man in the middle attack, so he can take all of this information, including the password and all other information. So uh, these are disadvantages of using the, the Telnet protocol, because it is not making any encryption of the communication. Uh, and Telnet protocol works with the, the port number 23. And it's not a good idea to use in industry the Telnet protocol to remote configuration of your equipment. So instead of having configuration of the uh, Telnet, it's, it's, it's better, it's best practice to use the SSH protocol, which stands for the Secure Shell protocol, which is making encryption of all of the configuration, I mean, uh, of all of the communication process between computer and the switch. Uh, first of all, you have to be, before configuring the, the SSH, so let me tell you that it works with the port number 22. And uh, first job which you have to do, you have to check is your uh, SSH is available uh, in your switch. Because some switches are not able to make encryption. They don't have this K9 value in the operating system. So the first thing which you have to do, you have to you have to type show uh, IP SSH, and then it is showing you that uh, SSH uh, dis uh, disabled version 1.99, uh, and please create RSA key. So it's, uh, it's, it means that it's not uh, working yet, but it is uh, um, available to to make the configuration of the SSH. All right, but we didn't uh, turn it on, we didn't create the key, uh, we didn't generate the RSA key. All right, let's continue with you guys. Uh, and then we have to, uh, our next step, we have to configure the IP domain. So IP domain is the name of your organization in which your switch is working. Uh, but before it, you, ha you also have to provide the configuration of the host name. So we have to define the host name of the switch. For example, it's going to be switch one. Then we'll define the, our domain name. So we'll t type IP domain. And then we have to type the domain name. So IP domain name and then our word. For example, this is SDU uh, KZ. This is our domain. Then what do we have to do next? We have to generate RSA key. How to generate RSA key? We have to be in global configuration mode and we have to type uh, key 
uh, crypto k generate rsa and then press enter after you have pressed enter uh, switch will prompt you to define the size of the key so and it's saying that by default if you will not change anything it will be 512 uh, uh, size bit uh, size frame size password sorry and then uh, you, you can change it to for example and as you see here from 360 to 2048 so you can use something like this and then your K is generated and here is the written inf important information that K uh, will not be exportable. Uh, what, what does it mean? It's saying that the K will not be exportable. What does it mean? It means that uh, when you will uh, save configurations or if you want to duplicate this configuration to another switch, so the K will not be duplicated. So you have to mention it. Then, uh, after we did it, uh, we have to do what? First step, configure uh, user authentication. We have to create username and password. So, in global configuration mode, you will type username, for example, admin, and the password is going to be, for example, Cisco. Uh, then it is saying that SSH enabled and has, so SSH has been enabled. Then we have to go to line VTY and we have to say that only uh, SSH will work with the line VTY so that if someone will try to make connection by Telnet it will not be available. So that we type line VTY 015 and then we type switch port also. We are typing command uh, transport input SSH only. All right. And now it's time to check, uh, do we have proper config, D did we properly configure it our equipment, I mean switch switch to so that to check we have to go to computer uh, and we have to type ssh dash l it is not one so one is written like this but we type l uh, it's like login as admin and login as admin to ip address 10 1 1 and 100 and then it is prompting us to type the password which is like at cisco enable and uh, class. So guys, we configured with you the SSH protocol. And if someone will try to make a Telnet connection to the same uh, IP, then saying that uh, it's closed by foreign host because uh, we just type it the comment uh, on our switch, which is looking like transport input SSH. And when you define the transport input SSH, it means that only SSH will be available uh, to, to, to manage the, the line VTY, the switch through line VTY port.